So today I'm going to show you how to make the tea rose buttonhole. It's just my standard tea rose set on a short stem and on this one I'll be showing you how to use a clasp on the back but you can just use a safety pin to attach, you know, holding it in place on your suit or your dress or your outfit, whatever you're wearing. You can make this in any colour that you like. You can change the colour of the leaves, you can change the colour of the rose. For most of this tutorial I will be referencing the bouquet toolkit which is going to be your major reference point for all of the steps in the processes involved for making most of my roses, whether they're paper roses like this one or book page roses and they also detail how to make the leaves and full information on, well, yeah, pretty much everything. So yes, do make sure that you save the bouquet toolkit so that you can use it as reference to make this buttonhole rose. So the final finished size of your rose may vary by a few millimeters, but the finished size is about seven centimeters and the leaves will pop out the side of the flower head about 2.5 centimeters. The stem, I usually make it so that the stem is about eight centimeters from the bend. So when you trim your stem, you want to make sure that it's about nine centimeters long. And yeah, that's just a lovely size where the stem doesn't come too far down. It's just the size of my hand. And they're relatively easy to make. Once you've cut all of your petals and your leaves, each of the individual flowers will take about 10 minutes to assemble and then perhaps another 15 minutes just to add the leaves and finish everything off. That doesn't include drying time because you will want to leave the flowers overnight. Any questions do let me know in the comments below. So the equipment that you'll need is most of my basic equipment. To start with you'll need to choose the colour that you wish to have for your tea roses and you'll need just under one sheet of A4 paper for each tea rose and if you're making three tea roses you'll need two sheets of A4 paper. I do usually use the De La Rowney coloured paper however sometimes I'll use a slightly thinner pearlescent paper and in today's video I'll be showing you with one of my spare tea roses that's been made from a very light blue De La Rowney. So in addition to the paper for the rose, and you can make this in any colour that you want, you'll also need a small piece of green paper for the leaves. You really don't need very much. Let's say you probably need about a third less than a third of an A4 sheet of paper to make the leaves. So have a look through your craft stash. Um, if you're making several, then obviously you'll need to buy full sheets. Now the Dale Rowney paper you can get in the craft shops in the UK as A4 sheets, or you can get them as large A1 sheets. It does work out cheaper to buy the A1 size. So if you're making several of these and you want them for all of your guests then it might be more beneficial to buy a larger sheet. Glue wise, my standard glue arrangement, you will want the wallpaper paste. All the details to mix it up are in the video description. You'll also want some high tack glue for the leaves and some PVA glue just for sealing the florist tape at the end well and in the middle a little bit as well. You'll also want to have some thread, some kitchen foil and some florist tape. If you're in the UK you can pick the florist tape up in Hobbycraft, they also sell it in the range, occasionally they sell it in the works or alternatively jump on eBay and search for florist tape and you'll be able to find some very good value tape. You'll also need some scissors and some wire. Now this wire is just general garden wire and if you need more information 
on any of these pieces of equipment then do go and check out the bouquet toolkit which will be your base videos for making all of the flowers and the leaves. And lastly, for making the leaves and the petals, you will need to download and print out my standard template. It's a free download, I've put it on my Google Drive. So you will need petal template number two for the tea roses and leaf shape number one for the leaves. And you can modify this arrangement any way you like. You can add extra leaves, you can add little pearl beads in the centre of the rows and you can add ribbons as well. So in preparation to make this rose, you'll need to cut at least 16 of the From the Coloured Paper. I always like to cut a few extra spare, and if you need full details on how to cut these petals, then do go and check out the Bouquet Toolkit. I'll put everything in the video descriptions so you can easily learn how to do that. And you'll also need to cut four of the leaf templates in leaf template number one. So that's 16 of these, four of these. You'll also want to cut your wire so that it's about 16 centimeters. This wire is for the leaves and we don't want it more than 16 centimeters because we absolutely, when we attach it to the rose, we don't want the wire to come down past the stem. So the last piece of prep work you'll need to do is to make yourself one foil stem. The method for making these up is very straightforward and again you can find all of the details in the bouquet toolkit under equipment. Now we only want half of a stem, so if you're making two you only need to roll one and obviously if you're making four you only need to roll two. They don't have to be exactly precisely cut in half at this point. So the next stage is to make your tea rose. The full instructions on making these up are in the bouquet toolkit as well. As I said, that's pretty much your basics for making all of my flowers. So do go and have a look at those and have a practice with those. And then you can come back here and actually follow this tutorial once you've got all your bits and pieces together. Once you've made your tea rose on a half stem, you want to cover it in florist tape. Don't worry about the very end if you haven't covered it just now because we're going to put several layers of florist tape on the stem to make it more sturdy. So you'll also need to make two leaves on wire. Full details on making these are in the bouquet toolkit which I've put together so that I don't have to keep repeating myself on every single tutorial that I do that uses the same process. So I do hope that's more helpful to you as well. So once you have your tea rose and your leaves prepared, this is very, very simple. All you need to do is to take your tea rose and bend it very slightly so that the rose head is facing forwards. Then you just need to decide whether you want the leaves at the top, to the right or to the left. I usually have mine just at the top. and. If you change your mind, you can just bend the leaves on the wire and put them to the other side. So you want to hold your leaves so that they're poking out over the edge of the petals about two and a half to three centimetres. You can have them lower, but if you have them too high, they'll look a bit silly. But it's personal preference really, but I usually have them about two to three centimetres and then holding the wire down the back of the stem I'll very very simply just use the florist tape and wind it around the whole length of the wire and when I get to the bottom I'll carry on winding and just fold the end over and double back on myself and wind all the way back up the stem. Simply snip that off and then using a little bit of PVA glue 
simply seal the florist tape in place. So there's two ways of attaching this rose. You can attach it with a safety pin and just attach it to your dress or your suit. And if that's the case, then just use the PVA glue and put it all the way down the stem and at the bottom and then just rub it in all around and then pop it like this to dry. That just strengthens all of the florist tape down the stem and once it's dried it won't come off and it makes the stem just a little bit more sturdy. But I'm going to show you today how to put a clasp type brooch style pin on the back because I thought that would be useful. I don't do this as standard on my tea roses. I normally recommend that you would attach them with a safety pin. So these little brooch style clasps, they have a flat edge here and I'd normally attach them so that the point is facing downwards. And it's very simple to do. We'll use a little bit of the high tack glue on the outside edge And we want to place it along the back of the rose. You want to make it so it's just under a centimetre from the leaves and you can take your florist tape and hold that pin in place with the florist tape. We've got some high tack glue which will dry very very solid and we'll also be putting a little bit of extra glue over this florist tape. So once we've wrapped that around four or five times, bring it down just underneath where the pin is as well and roll it around a few additional times, snip it off And at this stage we will put the PVA glue all the way up and down the stem. It is a little bit messy. And I'll just leave that like so to dry. And that won't take very long to dry, PVA glue is relatively quick at drying. Right, so the PVA glue has now dried and you can't see where the seams of the florist tape are, which is fabulous. And the pin is really firmly held in place and that will be very easy to attach to your clothing. And you can still adjust the leaves to one side or the other and you can still adjust the flower head to come a bit further forward if you prefer. You can even curl the leaves just by bending the wire in the center of the leaves. Not too hard, be very gentle because you don't want to actually make a crease in the leaf but you can see there that's more of an angle than this one. It's very simple, just take hold of it, both hands and just bend the wire within the paper lovely. So that's how you make the tea rose buttonhole and as I said you can make it in any colour that you want, you could add ribbons if you prefer, you might want to have a twine binding here and it just makes a lovely little keepsake for your wedding guests as well. So thank you very much for watching, do give me a thumbs up if you've made it this far and don't forget to save this to your watch later or make later playlist so that you can have it as easy reference for when you decide to make your flowers. If you need any assistance whatsoever you can catch up with me on Instagram as well and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see any of my future flower tutorials. Thanks for watching!